How's it going guys? Difficult question for microderm step one and even borderline internal medicine 2CK. 33 year old man, he was in a house fire. He's got this burn here and this image, which I jacked up the tint and the saturation to try to make this blue green, which would be reflective of pseudomonas causing infection superimposed on a burn with pyocyanin production. Okay, so pseudomonas can produce pyocyanin, a blue green pigment. Okay, if you get uh, an overtly yellow color to the burn, then that could be staph aureus instead. But I mean, I don't really know what to tell you. Uh, it looks blue green. All right, so let's just hop to the answers. Choice A, which the following best describes most like causal organism. The fuck am I saying right now? I'm just reading the question. Choice A. All right, so choice A, gram-negative diplococci, antigenic variation, wrong fucking answer, refers to gonorrhea. Let's do a lengthy discussion about absolutely everything here, but this is why we don't have a vaccine against gonorrhea is because it can produce antigenic variation, changes rapidly, whereas choice B, also wrong fucking answer, uh, gram-negative diplococcus with a polysaccharide capsule refers to nasary meningitis, and we can make a vaccine against it, right? So if splenectomy patients, uh, they're going to need vaccines against strep pneumo, nasary meningitis, homophilus influenza type, type B. These are the uh, encapsulated organisms, right? So obviously gonorrhea, that can be your STD, uh, gonococcal arthritis, et cetera, nasary meningitis is going to be uh, meningitis, okay? Once again, lengthy discussion. Choice B, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, gram-negative rods, cleavage of 60S ribosome, wrong fucking answer. It refers to Shigella, e hec 157 h 7 e coli, right? Mechanism for how they can also lead to uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome. So you could just be aware that uh, they could give you a vignette of Shigella or e hec and then the answer is inhibits translation. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, gram-negative rods, inhibition of elongation factor 2, correct answer, refers to pseudomonas, okay? Don't really know what to tell you. Some of you are like, OMG, Mike, this wasn't hard. Well, it's hard because a lot of you aren't sure of the micro and definitely aren't sure of the mechanisms, okay? So if you got this question right, that's great. Uh, let me just hop through the others real quick. I'm not going to make this a lengthy clip. Gram positive cacti and clusters, biofilm formation could refer to staph epiderminis. We talk about staph. Uh, staph aureus is classically uh, described as gram positive cacti and clusters, uh, but that terminology or, or that descriptor in clusters also can refer to epidermidis and saprophyticus, but biofilm is just classically staph epidermidis, okay? Could you Google maybe that staph aureus or saprophyticus could produce a biofilm? I'm sure you can find articles on it, but in isolation, it's staph epidermidis, catheters, okay, prosthetics. Wrong fucking answer. Choice, I don't know, fucking A, B, C, D, E, F, coagulase production grain positive cacti and clusters. Wrong fucking answer. Refers to staph aureus, okay, lengthy chat here. I already mentioned golden staph could give you a yellow uh, coloration here. But staph, somewhat ubiquitously, most common organism for a lot of things. Okay, endocarditis, acute endocarditis, uh, osteomyelitis, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Gram-positive cocci chains, aptochin-resistant, refers to strep viridans, wrong fucking answer, okay? So strep viridans is going to be subacute endocarditis broken down into strep mitis, mutants, sanguis, sanguinis, okay? So... It's just patients who have dental procedures, previous valve abnormalities, go on to get endocarditis. Wrong fucking answer. Choice, whatever, doesn't really matter. Grand positive cocci and chains, gamma hemolytic. Wrong fucking answer. This is going to refer to uh, strep bovis as well as enterococci. Okay. Gamma hemolytic just means that it's not going to cause hemolysis on blood agar. So if you have beta hemolytic, strepagony, strepagalactiae, that's group A, group B strep, that's going to be clear hemolysis. That's complete hemolysis. Alpha hemolytic, strep pneumo, strep viridans, that's going to be alpha hemolysis. That's partial hemolysis. That's green zone of hemolysis on blood agar. And then gamma hemolysis, strep bovis enterococci, gamma hemolysis, which you're going to have no hemolysis on blood agar. Wrong fucking answer. Gram positive filamentous rods, acid fast positive, wrong fucking answer. Okay, so this is going to be your nicardia. 
So Nicardia, I mean, we talked about the filamentous rods, not high yield, but Nicardia is going to be a TB-like pulmonary infection where they'll all, in 100% of questions for Nicardia and actinomyces, these final two answers, they'll give you, uh, they'll always tell you that there's gram-positive filamentous rods. They'll say that in the vignette. Or they'll show you an image where you can clearly see branching structures where you're like, hmm, are these hyphae? Is this a fungus? Like, what's going on here? Okay, so it'll it'll be obvious it's a filamentous rod, and we'll just say it's acid fast positive. You're like, that sounds like TB, but they're showing, but they're telling me it's a gram positive filamentous rod. They're showing me these branch structures here. Wrong fucking answer. And then finally, actinomyces. Uh, wrong fucking answer. Yellow sulfur granules can cause draining sinus tracts within the oral cavity. Okay, I should also mention for nicardia, it can cause osteomyelitis and meningitis. That actually weirdly can show up. And then SNAP is the mnemonic for treating these. Sulfonamides for nicardia, actinomyces, treat penicillin. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal when you make more content, I feel like my stuff, subscribe my channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.